can I have a quick confirmation if you can see the screen and also hear me? Okay, I've got one confirmation, two confirmation. Thank you so much, Chandni. Thank you, uh, Ravi. Okay, can I have uh, some more confirmation? Okay, I guess I'm pretty much uh, audible and visible to you guys. Okay, so, um, so I'm going to talk about what you can see on the screen. It says get noticed by top hiring companies. So if you are a job seeker or even if you're a student now, so you would definitely be seeking a job in some time from now. So you would know better than anybody else that it is very, very important that you get noticed by employers. But the most important thing to know here is that how do you know when your employers are going to get, you know, notice you? So being a job seeker in today's workforce is really, really challenging. There isn't a one size fits all solution to help job seekers land a job. In fact, if you want to be a standout job seeker, you have to go above and beyond to land on the radar of employers. Many job seekers today, they wonder why they must work so hard to find a job they love. After all, it, it, it is supposed to be easy, right? I mean, if, if you want to seek a job and landing, a, you know, getting a job, it's, it's supposed to be easy. But unfortunately, when employers hire new employees, they want candidates with the strongest talent and most skilled. Employers believe that this is a guaranteed way to improve the success of their company. So I'm Anirban Chakravarti, and I'm going to tell you what is it that you can do to get noticed by top hiring companies. So I've got a small PowerPoint presentation prepared for you guys so that we can understand what it takes to get noticed by hiring companies. So Harvard Business Review. So it, it is, um, you know, it is like from what, maybe a, maybe a couple of months back or maybe, uh, maybe more than that even. So it says that data scientist, the job of a data scientist is the hottest job of 21st century. Why? So you can have another listing here from McKinsey. McKinsey is one of the top consulting companies in, in the world. So it estimates that there is going to be 140,000 to 190,000 shortage of data scientists by 2018. So I'm, this is about, this is a global figure, but if I talk about India, we still have currently as in right at this moment, we have about 50,000 jobs available for the role of data scientist. And I'm going to prove it to you in some time. So this is a little, little about me. So my name is Anirban Chakrabarti and uh, I'm a certified analytics professional from University of Maryland, United States. I am a certified SaaS based programmer and a certified Six Sigma black belt. So I currently work on, I'm, I'm working on a project right now with a leading telecommunications company and I'm setting up the HR analytics center of excellence there. And in my previous role, I have been doing consultations and development of statistical models for credit card companies, for retail, and also for pharmaceutical industries. I have an experience of more than eight years in the field of analytics, project management, process management, team management, quality management, and training development. Uh, my expertise lies in some of the technologies in the field of data science, which in, includes cluster analysis, regression analysis, time series, and hypothesis testing. Um, I'm not really sure if this makes sense to you guys right now, but I'm sure that it is going to make sense in some time from now. 
So I have uh, an experience of more than five years in the field of both online and classroom trainings. I have conducted over 1000 hours of training. Actually, this number is a little old, but uh, it's, it's close to 13. 1300 hours now on both conceptual and applied aspects of data science and data analytics and that includes uh, various statistical tools like SAS and R. All right, so before I go ahead and talk about what what the agenda is for today, which is Okay, can you can you hear me now? Can I have a quick confirmation? Okay, all right, great, great. So I'm going to um, I'm going to unmute um, you know the attendees one by one so that you can give your introduction. So I'm going to unmute uh, Alusius. I'm not really sure if I'm I'm not able to do that, uh, but I've just uh, unmuted Bhargav. Bhargav, uh, if you can give your introduction. Hello. Yes, Bhargav. Yes, yes, Bhargav. We can hear you. Yes. Yes, I'm Bhargav Jyoti Saikia. I'm from Assam and I'm pursuing my MBA from Kaziranga okay. University. Okay. Hello. Yes, yes, uh, yes. We can hear that, Bhargav. Thank you so much for the introduction. I welcome you to the webinar. Thanks a lot. Okay, I'm going to unmute Chandni now. Chandni, if you can give your introduction. Right, I'm not able to unmute Chandni. Chandni, is it okay if you can write your introduction on the question box? Yeah, in the meantime, I have unmuted uh, Devi Prasad Mahapatra. So Hello. Devi Prasad Mahapatra, welcome, welcome to you. Can you, can you please give your introduction? Uh, good evening, sir. My name is Devishad Mohapatra and I'm doing my MBA in Birla Global University in first year. Okay, great. Uh, great, Devi Prasad. Uh, thank you so much for joining in. Thank you, sir. Okay, I have uh, Guna Sekhar. Uh, Guna, can you please give your introduction? Well, sir, I'm uh, Vikuna Sekhar from Andhra Pradesh. Currently, I'm pursuing third year B.Tech from Siddhartha Engineering College. Great, Gunasekar. Thank you and welcome welcome to the webinar. Thank you, sir. Okay, I have uh, Jai Sankar. Jai Sankar, I have unmuted you. Could you please give your introduction? Hi, all. Uh, I'm Jai Sankar from Kerala and I'm a B.Tech Mechanical Engineer, but currently working as Digital Marketing Executive and I'm looking forward for a, a business analytics. Okay. Bit, All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Jai Sankar, and I welcome you to the uh, webinar. Thank you. Okay. Uh, praise, praise, Potan. 
Hello. Hello, hello praise. Yeah. Hello. Yes, praise. Could you please give your introduction? I am praise from Calicut. I got B.Tech degree from M.E.S. Engineering College in IT. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you so much for the introduction, praise. I welcome you to the webinar. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I have a front of front of. I'm sorry, Panav, there's is, there is a lot of noise. Uh, so if, if that's OK, you can. Uh, all right, I think I think there is one more. Yes. Yeah, Pranav, can you hear me? OK, so Pranav, I would request you to uh, please uh, write very briefly introduce yourself. On the uh, on the question window. I'm going to unmute Rahul uh, Rahul Agarwal. Okay, Rahul, I'm not able to unmute him. Okay, I have uh, so okay Sonu, I'm not able to unmute Sonu. And I have uh, Ajit Ajit Krishna Venkat Venkat Ramanan. Ajit, can you hear me? Okay, all right. I think Ajit is not in. All right, and I have uh, last but not the least, Vattam Ravi Meher. Vattam, uh, if you can hear me, could you introduce yes, yourself? Sir. Hello, everyone. Good, uh, good evening, everyone. I'm uh, Ravi evening. Meher from Vishakhapatnam. Yeah. I'm currently in my final year of BTEC from Geetham University. All right, thank you so much for the introduction, and uh, I I welcome you to the webinar. Sure. All right. So uh, I have uh, I have the introduction from Chandni also. Uh, Chandni saying that uh, she is uh, she is from Anantapuramu, Andhra Pradesh, and she's pursuing her third year uh, bachelor's of pharmacy from Raghavendra Institute of Pharmaceutical Education Research. Thank you so much for the introduction, Chandni. I welcome you to the webinar. I also have Pranav. Uh, Pranav had just uh, uh, sent sent his uh, sent uh, his introduction. He's working for sales department. Thank you so much for the introduction, Pranav. I welcome you to the webinar. Uh, Ajit, uh, okay. All right. So Ajit, I uh, just unmuted you. Can you hear me? Okay, Ajit is not able to hear me. Okay, uh, all right, so I'll just uh, write something down for Ajit here. All right, so thank you so much, everyone, for the uh, for the brief introduction. It was it is very nice to have uh, the MBAs and the BTEC guys uh, in any webinar. I mean, that's that's from the experience I can tell you. But let let us quickly move to the agenda for uh, for this uh, evening. Okay, so what we have here in as a part of the agenda is basically why analytics i'm not here to tell you what is analytics because you know from what i understand uh, you know in most of the M uh, M mba schools in, in most of the business schools and most of the engineering colleges so you know people usually the students usually are aware of what analytics is all about okay but what i'm going to tell you is that why on earth you need to you need to learn analytics regardless of whatever you are learning so some of you would be doing your bachelor's of engineering, bachelor's of pharmaceuticals, bachelor of, or, or, you know, maybe you are doing a, your BBA, MBA, or maybe your uh, general courses like your BSc, BCom, BA, whatever you are doing in your lives. It is utmost important that you have some idea of what an analytics is all about because this is going to be the future. Uh, how do I know that? 
because I have been in this domain for quite some time now. I do a lot of uh, workshops. I do a lot of uh, seminars across the country and uh, I've, I've been with a lot of uh, industries. So I know and I, I've also been a part of uh, the HR community uh, in one for one of the organizations and I was uh, responsible for the recruitment. So I have had the opportunity to go out uh, to MBA colleges, to business colleges, and also the engineering colleges for campus hiring. So I can tell you for a fact, why is it so important? All right, so we have uh, a slide here which talks about what's the market buzz on analytics, okay? So I, I'm, I'm primarily talking about uh, India because India is the, the actually the upcoming market for analytics is already an upcoming market but the boom is not yet here so the boom is going to be here in like a year or so i cannot really predict that but the boom is soon arriving so uh, some stats here some numbers because uh, analytics is all about numbers so i felt the need of giving you the numbers to you know so that you get some idea as to you know how lucrative this is so indian analytics market to double $2.3 billion by 2.18. $2.3 dollars, right? So, so it was half last year, and this year it is predicted to just double. So this is a big, big number, okay? You can think of the number of zeros which are there in it. So 83% of the business leaders globally identified as their top priority. So IBM states that most of the business leaders, when I say business leaders, you can think of it as the companies, okay? So the most of the companies who are leaders in the field of, uh, of whatever they are doing, whether they're into technology, whether they're into healthcare, whether they're into retail, whatever it is, okay? So if I talk about technology, so let's say IBM is stopping the chart or maybe Apple is stopping the chart, okay? So they have realized the importance of analytics. If I talk about a healthcare again, okay? So IBM is stopping in the field of healthcare. It understands the importance of, uh, of you know, of analytics if i talk about social media so obviously we have facebook okay we have twitter we have linkedin all of them have identified the importance so they are they are investing huge amount of money in in developing their analytics resources in develop in hiring people okay uh, shortage of 1.5 million business and analytics professionals by 2018 so mckinsey i think this is this has come from the previous slides with, in which McKinsey has stated that there is going to be a shortage worldwide of about 1.5 million business analytics professionals, which means there will be work, there will be jobs, but there won't be any people to do that. So wouldn't it be nice to acquire a skill set for which there will be no shortage of actually, uh, you know, of jobs i mean when i say no shortage of, i mean to say that there are a lot of jobs available but not not too many skills which are there in the market so you get that skill set you get the job as simple as that okay so india is the global analytic hub that's the that's the statement by times of india so there was an entire article that was you know written out on that subject so the next big boom is in analytics is the analytics okay so there was a boom once for it when bpos kpos all of these things came into picture but now is the boom of analytics indian companies grooming data scientists to feed the global job requirements so so we have the companies in india the universities across the country they are grooming their students to become data scientists now you may be wondering why why do I need to learn it? I mean, I am I'm doing my MBA, let's say. So why do I even want to do that? Now, the you know, the point is that if you're doing your MBA, you do not know what kind of job you will be getting. So today, the the, the your, your dream job is going to be managing a business. OK, that's what your g dream job would be. So either you will be managing a floor or managing a retail department or managing uh, a particular department within a, within a company, whatever you are managing, everything is driven by numbers. Everything is driven by numbers. But if you do not understand the numbers, 
you will never be able to become a good manager because as a manager you will be required to make decisions time and again over and over again so if you do not if you are only using your experience so obviously since you guys will be freshers okay and you would not have an experience so in order to gain that experience it will take some time okay uh, let's say you you gain that kind of experience also okay over let's say you've worked for two years three years and you gain that kind of an experience but does it necessarily mean that you will be using your experience and your judgment to make decisions the answer is no that does not happen in the in today's world so everything that you do every decision that you make has to be driven by numbers has to be driven by analytics when there is numbers you need to understand how to bring meaning how to extract meaning out of that those numbers so how to extract meaning out of those numbers is the science of business analytics or data analytics so before i move to this particular term which is uh, you know i i've actually picked up some some terms about on, on analytics because this is these are the terms that you you may be hearing a lot of times i mean you may have already heard about them but do not know exactly what they mean so i'm going to give you a brief of them but before i move into that i'd like to share a small survey a small study that was being done by uh, one of the uh, one of the leading i'm um, actually it's not just the leading is the is one and the most powerful magazine of analytics in the country right now okay and it is renowned it comes in top five analytics magazine or analytics platform a community across the globe so it's called analytics india magazine a i m okay so this is a survey this is a research which was done by or a study rather which was done by a i m and they are saying that currently at this po point at this moment there are 50,000 jobs available for analytics. Now, who learns an analytics, okay? Who are those people who need to learn analytics? I'm, I'm an MBA. Do I need to learn analytics? I've already explained that you need to learn analytics. I am an engineer. I'm a me mechanical engineer, or I'm a, I'm a civil engineer, or I'm an electrical engineer. Do I need to know analytics? Why do I need to know analytics? The answer is yes, you need to know analytics. So you'll come to know in like, let's say in two minutes time, what, which, which type of people are getting hired in the field of analytics you need you will come to know besides engineers are you know are people with you know with the uh, with the understanding or the knowledge of tools and all that stuff and if you can add the skill of analytics you get an upper hand because you necessarily do not have to be a part of a construction company just because you are a civil engineer you will be you must have you must know that there are a lot of engineers who are working in banks they are recruited by banks why why would a bank recruit an engineer obviously there are reasons because they are supposedly the you know the people with highest iq level okay so if that is the case and you add that skill of analytics you have maximum opportunities you just don't rely on few openings in your particular domain you are an electrical engineer now there can how many how many electrical industries are there in india if you only target those industries you are actually limiting yourself why to target your uh, limit yourself you add few skills and you broaden your horizon there are a lot of opportunities which are there in the market not just those electrical industries okay so what new job openings each month okay so there are 10 so we have list they have listed out aim has list, listed out some of the top industries some of the top companies which uh, you know which have openings maximum number of analytics openings so the names are Amazon, City, HCL, Goldman Sachs, IBM, Ernest Young, KPMG, JP Morgan, Capgemini, Accenture. So these are like the top names. Okay, and there are number. The number is too large. Okay, so you probably you know this space is not enough to accommodate the number of companies who are hiring for analytics. I'm you know I have worked for companies like Bank of America, Vodafone. 
you know, American Express, I've worked for Citibank, I've worked for Accenture. I know that what is the importance of analytics and what is the uh, focus, what is the company's focus on analytics? Okay, so moving on. So I can, uh, so there is a breakup of analytics jobs by cities. Okay, so we have Bangalore, Delhi, Mumbai, Hyderabad, Pune, Chennai, Ahmedabad, Kolkata, and others. So this is the trend. So obviously, ba uh, Bangalore being or Bangalore rather being the hub of uh, of IT and analytics in uh, in the country. So we have the maximum jobs there, and about what about 27% of the jobs is in Bangalore. But if you can see, then there are other cities as well which have uh, the jobs of analytics available. Okay. Do you provide some analytics training? Okay, so we'll talk about that Avinav in a second. Okay, so no, not in a second, but let us just uh, you know understand uh, the stats, understand some of the information, and then we can talk about the training. Okay. Now, uh, analytics jobs by industry. Okay, so let's find out what all different types of industries are giving the jobs in analytics. Who are those people who are giving jobs in the field of analytics? So we have banking and financial services offering maximum number of jobs in the field of analytics. And I've told you that engineers also work, work in banks. So, you know, and MBAs, of course. So there is no question that MBAs, why wouldn't MBAs be working in banks? So that's true. It, they will. Okay. So uh, if you see, uh, okay, let me just tell you one more thing. So this is this, we have a light colored bar and a, and a dark blue colored bar, okay? So the light colored R is from 2016, the number from 2016, and uh, the dark colored is for 2017. So if you'd see that in most of the industries, for most of the industries, the, the number of jobs or the percentage of analytics jobs have increased since last year. Okay, so we have e-commerce, we have pharmaceuticals, healthcare, energy and utilities, media and entertainment, telecom, retail and CPG, automobile, travel and hospitality. So these are all different type of industries who require uh, analytics professionals. So you may be able to now connect or relate to what you are doing now. You may be doing an MBA, so you can relate well, which all organizations would be recruiting you. Okay, if you're an engineer, you'd now be able to understand. So you may probably be going to an energy and utilities if you're an engineer. Maybe previously you were thinking about only uh, energy and utilities, about telecom, maybe about automobile. But now you can know you you know if you get the skills of analytics, you can you know you can explore other areas as well. Okay, so we have another stats here which says okay i have a question from devi prasad mahapatra e-commerce being the profit making machine then why analytics is a shortage in 2017 do you mean that why the number of uh, the requirement for analytics professionals have gone down is that what you mean devi prasad Okay, yeah, I got that. All right, so so most of the e-commerce companies that you see have evolved in how many years? In last three, four years, aren't they? So they have emerged in re emerged recently, right? So they are currently running at a saturation rate. I mean, they already have the people because they started with analytics in the first place. They are the first people, they are the first domains who, who introduce analytics in the market because whatever they are doing is all driven by analytics, okay? So think about, think about Amazon. How does Amazon know that if you buy this product, you may also like a different product? the recommendations so all of these came with you know all of these uh, the e-commerce companies they all started with analytics so they probably would have the the number of analytics professionals that they needed so in 2018 or in 2017 probably they had different ideas in their mind maybe they were in they were investing in iot 
maybe they're investing in digital marketing more because they already have those kind of people but that does not necessarily mean that they no longer use uh, need them the point is that they started with those requirements okay now there are other others also who are you know who are uh, understanding the requirement so that does not necessarily mean that they do not need analytics professionals anymore so you can see that there is a there has been a dip but it, it has not been absolutely zero does it answer your question Devi? okay so you can see in this particular graph most welcome in this particular graph you'd be able to see that the btex or BEs, which are Bachelor of Engineering, they are the highest number of people, or they are the people who are recruited the most in the field of analytics. But why would somebody hire you if you do not know these skills? So this number is for people who are engineers and at the same time, they have the analytical skills, okay? Now, what are those analytical skills? We will, I will talk about them in some time. Okay. All right. Thank you so much, Chandni. Uh, so we have got postgraduate degrees. Then we have MBAs. We have uh, graduate degrees, MTech, and we also have CAs. So we have different, you know, people from different uh, educational background getting hired in the field of analytics. Okay. Experience. So you must be now asking me a question. I'm a fresher. Why would somebody hire me even if I have the knowledge of analytics? Because I, I do not have any experience, any, any professional experience. Okay. Uh, so I have a question from Ajit. Ajit is asking, is that necessary to pursue MS in such thing? So uh, let me just try and understand, uh, try and, uh, you know, understand your question. Correct me if I'm wrong. Do you want to know if a master's degree in the field of analytics is important? Is that what you're asking? Okay. No, it is not. Trust me, guys. To be honest, any certification that you do in any professional certification that you do would only be fruitful, would only be, uh, you know, relevant if you are able to prove yourself in an interview okay so you may go out and do a particular education you know you can go out for higher study i, I mean i did go out for my uh, higher studies and i got a certification so the certification that i talked about in the beginning so let me just go back and show you that hold on so when i gave you my introduction so you must have noticed it says cap Okay, so that the CAP is the highest level of certification that you can get in the field of analytics. It stands for Certified Analytics Professional, and it's a it's a certification that is given by the University of Maryland, U.S. in collaboration with Informs Institute of Operations Research and Management Sciences. So that's based in Maryland, U.S.A. I'm the first in the country to get this certification, uh, but you know, even if I get this certification and I do not know how to do stuff, then it does not make sense because obviously, um, you know, a company may want to hire me because they know that I am well versed theoretically with, with the information. But the point is, or the best part is today in this in this era, we have the education system developed in such a way that by doing a certification program, you not only get shortlisted or noticed by the companies, but at the same time, you get hands-on practice because everything is project-based. No one is going to give you only knowledge, knowledge thing, okay? There's less of download and more of hands-on practice because the more practice you do, the more project-based study you do, you know, you'll, you'll understand it better. And when I say project, these are actually real-time projects that are, that are being done, okay? So that's how the education system is developed in today's world. How can I believe being a pharmacist that there will be no more decline in the need of business 
analyst in the field of pharmacy and in that case how should i believe that company will hire me in this field okay very good question chandni see i cannot predict future i mean if you tell me what is going to happen tomorrow i may not be able to tell you i can only tell you what the trend is okay did you or if you if you okay chandni you know ask this question to your parents did they ever feel the need of you know using an app to mark to shop something or to do a shopping did they ever think of any such thing maybe not the answer is not maybe not they never i can tell you that they would never have thought of anything of that sort okay now did they ever think or did they ever believe in the fact that they can they do not have to go to a bank to withdraw money or deposit money they always felt that you know if i have to withdraw money i'll definitely have to go to a bank did they ever think of an idea of an atm of course they did not right so things are changing things have become technical so it is all digital it is becoming digital every day and as so not everything has become digital yet you know we have not reached the highest degree of digitization yet so the day we reach the highest degree of digitization so i do not know what is going to happen then what is the next thing that we are going to do okay so maybe iot maybe robots will come okay today if you know that there are call centers you know what a call center is chandni okay great so we call up them for a query and they answer our questions right so do you know that there are companies who have got rid of call centers they have replaced the call center people like those 100 individuals maybe who were working in the call centers they have been replaced by something known as bots b o t s it's a short form for robots okay what they do so when you call somebody it is the ivr machine and the ivr answers your query so it is all analytics because the ivr knows already which question need to be answered in which way so it is analytics so you may be if you are a call center professional you would lose that job but if you are a data analytics or a programmer or somebody who is or in that you are a part of the team who who develop that with the knowledge of analytics you wouldn't lose your job are you getting the difference are you able to understand yeah chandni can i get a confirmation if that answers your question okay i'm not sure is chandni still there all right thank you so much chandni there is one more information guys and this is not just for chandni this is for everybody um you know that there are uh, thank you you are most welcome chandni so there are uh, machines which are getting connected to web can you tell me some of the machines which are connected to wifi in today's world okay i will let you guys answer that question the devices which are connected to wifi in today's world okay the devices that we use daily okay i mean day on day uh, day to day life and in the meantime i'll answer ajit's question ajit is saying it goes more like of artificial intelligence and i'm getting confused on ai and i what is is oh okay is is for is all right sure so uh, ajit ai is the is the advanced level of analytics so it is a part of analytics so analytics starts analytics has a journey i'm going to show you that journey in a moment so this analytics starts with something and it goes up to somewhere so this it's a long journey of analytics you don't really have to learn everything okay but if you can it's fine if you do not then it's all right so i'll i'll tell you how i started my journey in the field of analytics and you will be able to understand that better 
okay my question still remains what are the devices which are connected with wi-fi that you guys are aware of so i will tell you that okay so we have mobile devices which are connected we have routers which are connected okay are there televisions they are connected have you heard of refrigerators connected with wi-fi have you heard of cars connected with wi-fi ceiling fans connected with wi-fi yes absolutely every device is going to get connected this is iot so this is the next level absolutely right it's called iot it stands for internet of things so this is this is the the you know the future but in order to do iot iot requires a you know obviously it requires programming skills and analytical skills so we need programmers to program and we need uh, the data scientists to do the analytics so both will combine and will create the world the entire world will become iot driven in some time in the in near future so where do you where do you see yourself in a situation like that if you do not know an analytics do you think you will be able to survive i can't see a situation where you will be you know you know people will be able to survive because of you know if they do not do that unless and until of course you know we are politicians i do not think i do not know if politicians need to learn analytics but in future they would also have to learn analytics if they have to win elections because elections are also driven by analytics these days if you guys are aware of that okay all right so let's move on to the next segment uh, and one of you would have to remind me that i'll talk about the journey of analytics okay can somebody do that thank you chandni all right so i will now discuss about uh, some of the terms that you may have already heard about them like big data data science data analytics what are these things okay so i'll first talk about big data so uh, anything that we write anything that we post you guys know about facebook right so in facebook you hit likes or you hit uh, dislikes you do that right yes no do you guys do that like you hit like and you hit you don't hit so like something so you hit the other one thumbs down you also you know write comments or reply uh, uh, on a comment on particular post or maybe a particular picture that your friends would have posted you also uh, you know upload images or videos on on youtube so everything that you do everything that you're currently doing okay on any any website or any uh, any uh, you know sensors or anything for that matter everything is generating a uh, data everything okay now i'll talk about traditional method most of you would have bank accounts or maybe credit cards so when you file for credit card or apply for a credit card or maybe apply for a personal loan educational loan, whatever you must have filled out a form did you not fill out a form when you applied for a bank account or maybe a credit card you did right so those information that you fill out on the form all everything is data isn't it data because that is getting captured somewhere the bank bank is capturing that data keeping it for its uh, reference right okay now that is data now that data what does it do with the data is it is the bank you know just just saving that data for no use at all or is it is it will it do something about that data it is going to do something about that data right no no it's, it's not just for reference it is going to do something about the data now i'll let me give you an example um, you know that whenever somebody applies for a credit card the application may get rejected or may get accepted you guys are you know aware of that right so i mean not all the applications will be accepted some get rejected also how do you think the banks take that decision that you know this application will be rejected this application will be accepted how do they take that decision background check okay now what background check would they do 
so they would definitely see some information right so they would see or uh, what is the name uh, do they uh, what is their civil score absolutely right so they will check their civil score they will check whether the person is working whether the uh, what is the salary does he own a home or so and so forth right so now so if you do not if the bank thinks that i will not give credit card to anybody who is not working right if the bank have taken such a decision do you not think the bank would would be making a loss because these days in today's world the students also have i mean think about yourself you may be doing an mba or maybe doing your engineering you can also carry a credit card and you may have you may be doing a lot of usage of your of your credit card is that not good for the bank that you being a student you are using your credit card and bank is earning money right it's a loss for the bank if they if they decide that i will not give a give a credit card to a student that will be foolish for the bank but does that mean that the bank will keep giving credit cards to every student who applies for it obviously not the bank may be looking at 100 other different things before it gives out absolutely right they are called criteria so the bank will be looking at a lot of criteria before it gives out any credit card now how does the bank look at all the criteria at one time and all the applications at one time and make a decision do you think bank will will be uh, you know having an entire big department of people going you know going after all the applications and then deciding who to give who not to give and so on and so forth it will take a lot of time so bank will rely on data science bank will rely on the analytics team and the analytics team will tell them which application to give uh, i mean which application to approve which application to reject basis on previous history because the banks may have given credit card to somebody with some criteria and he did not may pay the money back so bank will know that this kind of people or this type of people should not be given a credit card at the same time bank will have so many other types of people who took a credit card and they are paying very nicely so bank knows that these are the criteria of the people who can be given a credit card now all this information all the permutation combination checks and all that things bank you know it's it's not possible for just you know one person or or to do uh, for one person to do manually so one has to understand how to read the numbers how to bring out meaning from those numbers using tools so understanding of the numbers understanding of the data science methodologies and and knowing a tool so these are the three important things that banks will hire and somebody with those info with those experiences or those skill sets will be hired by the bank and he will help the bank to make those type of decisions is that can't be done by queries in database no database queries are to fetch data not make uh, you know do the uh, the met use the methodologies of data science okay so moving on so big data so big data is a technology that saves huge amount of data so actually in, the, in today's world with the social media coming into picture so there is a lot of data which is getting generated every single second okay every single second so which is why uh, all right i couldn't figure it out well okay so what is what is it that you couldn't figure it out ajit okay let me first answer ajit's question how is data science and data, okay why can't an excel handle okay all right very good question excel is also an analytical tool but excel has limitations excel cannot do everything so there are very high level analytics questions that excel cannot handle excel is basically a reporting tool so 
analytics is divided into so i'll give you some examples hold on so it, i've i've some of the examples coming up okay i'll i'll give those examples in one of the slides okay so hold on till then uh, so I have one more question. How is data science and data analytics related data science and data analytics are the same thing? Okay at this point there are minor differences up enough, but uh, You do not really have to understand the difference right now So think of data science as the methodology or the science of looking at a data using some techniques technologies methodologies and finding the meaning out of it that is what data science or data analytics is all okay so if i give you a lot of data a lot of numbers how do you make sense of those numbers is what data science teaches you okay is that fine so that's what you need to know right now about what data science or data analytics is all about okay now how to build a career in data science what is it that you need to know so let's let's look at some of the functions and skill sets of data science professionals so science in programming to analyze so see programming so i'm not really sure what you understand by the word programming uh, but let me just talk about this a little so data science is the science of looking at numbers applying some methodologies and getting meaning out of it to answer a certain business question okay now what is what is programming to do with it so in order to do that you need some tools right you cannot you cannot actually do everything by hand it, it will take you a lot of time in order to do mathematics because analytics involves a little bit of maths a little bit of probabilities a little bit of applied statistics so it does have mathematics involved in it so why would you want to do the mathematics manually why can't we use a tool so there are tools available so if you know how to use the tool you will just be a user you will not be a programmer i mean you do not have to develop a tool there will be tools you just should know how to use a tool do you know how to use excel chandni You know that, right? So, are you required to develop a tool like Excel? Would would anybody ask you to develop a tool like Excel? Or the expectation is to to be able to use Excel? Right? So you are expected to how you expected to know. So the question was so you are expected to know how to use excel i mean you are not expected to develop an, a develop a tool like excel right so you are expected to know only how to use excel so that is what the tool in analytics will also expect you i mean somebody who's hiring you will expect that you know how to use a tool not necessarily develop a tool because you are not a developer you're not a software developer right so you just have to know how to use the tool okay so ajit yes that's correct so when i say uh, when you when you're saying huge volume of data a huge volume of data does not necessarily mean big data okay a huge volume of data can be a general traditional data also big data is a data which is saved in a big data technology so big data te technology is a different technology from the traditional do you know what is rdbms ajit rdbms relational database management system okay so that is the traditional method of saving data or organizing data but these days since the data is getting very high, very large in size so let's say think about google do you can you imagine the amount of data google generates every second it's huge right isn't that huge that google generates millions absolutely right actually trillions so how does it say if it has to use an rdbms then it will it will have to invest a lot of money in you know getting that those kind of servers and all that stuff so now they have got into the mode of big data so let's say cloud so cloud is big data okay so you can save a lot of data in cloud all right so 
but otherwise it is right that analyzing huge volume of data using some methodologies or using some science is called a data science that's correct now let's talk about some of the functions and skill sets of of data science so first of all if you, you know let's say you get a job as a data scientist in an organization you will be given a problem a business problem okay now let's say the business problem is my sales are going down so you're working for a manufacturing company and the sales are going down what do you think you will do in order to resolve that situation that's an open question anybody can answer analyze the trend okay abhinav is saying analyze trend how about others see for the reasons past sales so that's absolutely correct so you will look at previous information previous data will you not look at previous data and see what went wrong so how will you look at previous data previous data is a number right the numbers previous data are numbers feedbacks feedback is text feedbacks may be text but it is also data data does not mean only numbers data can be text also so you look at previous information which is a data and then you will analyze it now how will you analyze it if you do not know analytics we need to know analytics right to analyze it what do you guys say would you not do you need analytics do you need to know analytics to analyze or you can analyze just like that no 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 not just tool of course you will need a tool because you cannot do the mathematics by hand but before you need before you know the tool you should know the knowledge you should have the knowledge of what you need to do right that's correct so that's the use of analytics so first understanding so if you are given a problem you understand the business problem then you use the data mining data mining is there are certain different methodologies used so it's a part of data science only then you do descriptive predictive analytics you do some uh, you understand the data then you you forecast do some forecasting and then you come up with business strategies so these are the steps these are the steps of a data science functions so understanding the business problem then you work on the data use the data science methodologies and then come up with solutions so everything needs analytics to be able to answer that so if you are an mba imagine that way if you are an mba and you are managing a business the business is facing a problem would you not be expected to resolve that problem with the help of data science what do you guys think would you or would you not that's exactly why we are having this webinar okay use of analytics okay so what are the use of analytics some examples here so we have market segmentation so with the use of analytics we can segment the market okay now let's say um give me a give me the name of a village give me the name of a village in let's say in 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 which place okay anywhere i mean nearest village give me the name of a nearest village where you guys stay any one of you chennai city not city i'm not talking about chennai city a village uppaluru okay so i've got uppaluru okay now let's say would rolls royce open a showroom in uppaluru but can can rolls royce be 100% sure that uppaluru is not a right place so maybe just by the name just because uppaluru is a village does not necessarily mean that the people in uppaluru do not have the capacity to buy a rolls royce this is where the mistake would have would be done rolls royce if it feels that yeah yeah it's in india and also it's a village i don't think people will have the capacity to buy a rolls royce let's say rolls royce thinks like that they will be making a big mistake people like 10 years back never thought that indians would buy jaguar yes no 
So, but but Indians have the capacity to buy Jaguar. Do they not have the capacity to buy anything that they want in today's world? So, how would they come to know? So, they will have to do these surveys. They will have to find out. They can't really just give an over, give a helicopter view. You know, look at from the top and say, yeah, yeah, this can happen and this cannot. So, they cannot do something, anything like that anymore. So, every decision has to be driven by data in today's world, which is where the analytics will come into picture. You're getting it? Is that making sense to you all? Now, since everything will be driven, they may be thinking that we need not place a showroom in village just to make sure. No, see, I'm not getting into the nitty gritties, Chandni. I'm not getting into the technicalities. I'm just saying that the data is required to help make the decisions. Right? But little confusion is going. Okay. So, yes, Ajit, what is the confusion? Please tell me. Let me just try and clear that confusion. Will this strategy like data collection is alone a job? Uh, well, see, a uh, data, okay, data analytics is not a one person job, okay, or it, data analytics involves a lot of steps. So, if, if for a bigger organization, so let me talk about an organization as big as American Express. So, when I was working for an uh, American Express, so they had a very big team on data analytics. Okay, so they had an entire team of 10 people whose job was only to collect data. They were not doing they were not doing any other steps of analytics, but they were part of analytics team. Okay, then there were few people whose job was only to clean the data because the data that is collected may not be clean. Okay. Yeah, data from social media or data from whatever, whatever data. Okay, I'm not going to get into what data because I cannot tell you everything about what kind of job, what kind of work I was doing because you know that's really not right to talk about that on um, you know on air. So, so there were people who were collecting only data. There were people who were only working on cleaning the data. There were people who were using the application, using the tool to to predict or to find out what went wrong. So there are these are the different steps. But if you work for a smaller organization, you may have to do everything. So, you know, but, but you do not know where you will land up in. So it is, it is always better that you know everything. Okay. Now imagine a situation that you graduated and you do not have a job. Think about it. Okay. You do not have a job, but you know analytics, but no one is giving you a job of applying the analytic science i mean the you you want you know there are different methodologies i'll talk about one or two so let's say uh, clustering is a technology clustering is a technology let's say okay and you know how to do the clustering because but no one is hiring you for doing the clustering but since you know analytics one of the companies came and hired you as somebody who will only collect the data would you not want to do that job now that you do not have a job at all of course you will do, but no one would have hired you in the first place if you did not even know clustering. Since company knows that you know clustering, then they are sure that if you know clustering, then you will be able to do at least the data collection part, which is also part of analytics. That's how it works. Okay. Will this help a person who wants to become an entrepreneur? Is this necessary? Yes, absolutely right, Chandni. If you want to become an entrepreneur, this is the lot of data that you need to analyze. Okay, there's a lot of data that will go in. There's a lot of data. There's a lot of surveys. There's a lot of information that you should be able to understand. Yes, it is required. Now, I'm not saying that an entrepreneur should only have to know anything. There's a lot of other things that an entrepreneur should be able to do or should know, but like how to manage a business. But at the same time, he should also know analytics. Okay, next in retail, in retail, there are some, some information like, you know, 
So I, I can share this uh, PowerPoint presentation with you guys. You can look at all the examples one by one. And you know, if you have any questions, you can definitely uh, get back to the make intern team and they'll be able to answer that question or I'll be able to. Could you go in depth exactly with your journey? Yes, I will do that Ajit, in a minute. So in retail, we have analytics. Some examples are how to how to do pricing, how to decide which which object to be priced at what level? Okay, so analytics is used there. In media, you you know a decision can be uh, done using analytics. How to allocate programs on uh, you know the TV shows? So some examples are there. A data scientist can have many roles. A data scientist can be called a statistician. A data scientist can be a data engineer, a quality analyst, a mathematician, data analytic consultant, actuarial scientist, business analytic practitioner, depending on where you are working and what kind of role you have. So and a data scientist can have many roles. So I'll talk about the journey now. So in the journey, when I started analytics, I started my journey trying to understand what is analytics. The first thing that I understood was what is analytics? Why do I need to learn analytics? Okay, that was kind of an introduction. Okay, that's what I learned first. The next thing that I did was I tried and I tried to understand the different types of data. When I call when I say data, what are the different types of data that one comes across? How is the data saved? How is the data managed? I tried to understand that. Then I went on to understand Excel. Okay, so I understood Excel. I understood how Excel works. How can I use Excel for reporting? That's what I do, did next because that is also part of analytics. Then I moved on to understand how SQL works because SQL is obviously the query language part. So I try to understand how the query language works. If I have a database, how can I uh, manipulate the database and how can I actually get the data and all that stuff? So I understood that. Post that, I moved into core analytics. Okay, in core analytics, I tried to understand. I picked up. Oh, before that, I did visualization also. So there are different visualization tools which are available, like Tableau, Click View. Okay, so that helps you to visualize the data. So let's say. If I have to visualize how many people came in this webinar. So let's say I conduct webinar every single day, for example. Okay, so for an entire at the month end, I want to find out in my week one versus week two versus week three versus week four. What were the number of people who came? Okay, what were their uh, their, their educational background? which which uh, you know what were their experience level and all that stuff i want to visualize that with the help of graphs and charts so that is done that is known as data visualization so i learned that then i moved on to core analytics in core analytics i tried to understand different technologies which are available in the field of data science like regression analysis hypothesis testing clustering analysis classification machine learning artificial intelligence yeah, that's right. In visualization, we only have graphs. Okay, graphs and dashboards. You know what dashboards are, right? So if you click something, everything else changes. You you want to find out in uh, on uh, weekly, so we get weekly information. If you click on monthly, we get monthly information. So that that is a dashboard. So dashboards can also be done with the help of Tableau visually. Okay. So after I learned that, I also learned that along with the tool. So a tool. I'll talk about some of the tools. The most popular tool of this, uh, you know, at this time is R. Okay, just a capital letter R. So R is a statistical tool. So I learned R, I learned SAS, I learned Python. So these are the three tools which are very popular in the field of analytics. And using those tools, I I also learned how to apply the data science knowledge that I have gained to solve business problems. So that has been my journey. Um, well, see, SAS, uh, there is a difference, okay? So, though there, SAS is a, there, it, it is an analytical tool, statistical analytical system. So, that's the full form. SAS is a software. 
So if you learn SAS, you'll be able to use your uh, understanding of data science with SAS. Like, like, let's think about think about it as an X, as Excel. Okay. So then after that, obviously, uh, now I'm I'm learning IoT. So so the journey continues. So that's that's been the journey. Top companies which are hiring data scientists. So we have, you know, you can see the names, right? So uh, we have uh, Google, Facebook, Amazon, Yahoo, Twitter, eBay. So this is like the top companies. Uh, R says Python differ or alternatives. Alternatives. These are all meant to do the same kind of work. So you may want to learn R, you may want to learn SAS, Python. Different companies use different tools. Okay. So when I was working for Bank of America, they were using SAS. Uh, when I moved on to uh, when, when I when I moved on to American Express, they were using SAS. When I moved on to Citibank, they were using SAS. And most, in fact, financial institutions are still using SAS. Okay. And uh, when I when I was in Vodafone, they used R. They were using R. Okay, so you never know which company uses which tool. Okay, so let's say if you learn only R to start with, you sh you can learn R, and that uh, that specialization is enough. Actually, enough. Why? Because obviously you start with one tool, right? So R gives you a lot of scope. R gives you a lot of scope. Why? Because the primary difference between R and SAS is that R is free and SAS is a commercial tool. So for companies, they have to pay SAS a very huge, a very big amount of money to use that tool. So most of the companies are in today's world using R rather than SAS. So which is why, uh, which is why R has become very popular. So if you have to start with an analytical tool, I think that should be R. Okay. All right. Next, obviously, some technologies which are in demand. So we have R, SAS, Python, Tableau, machine learning. So machine learning obviously is not a technology, uh, but obviously, um, if you look at R, it, it comes first. Then we have SAS. Then we have Python. SAS is a commercial tool uh, for uh, for um, Analytical is a statistical tool. Python is also free. It is a statistical tool. Tableau is a visualization tool. Okay, so Tableau with the help of Tableau, we are able to create those graphs and charts and dashboards. All right. So now, why are we having this? Webinar. So, of course, to ensure that you understand how analytics is helpful. So, someone asked me the question: Do I train? Am I into training? So, I told you that I am into training. I have I have been a trainer for quite some time now, like approximately six years now, over six years actually. And uh, I would like to talk about the course which is in offering which is powered by make intern which is called a business analytics certified professional course you said you'll be saying about journey of analytics which i just said and uh, chandni i just i just told you my journey of analytics starting with how introduction to data science i started knowing introduction to data science and i moved to ai and then i'm learning and now i'm learning iot Image analytics, video analytics differ from business analytics? No, it is not. So, so a company who is into image or video, okay, so that's the that's its business, right? And if you work for that company, you are doing business analytics. If you work for YouTube, I mean, of course, let's say you're working for Google and you are in the department of YouTube, you probably may be doing video analytics. Okay, if you're working for Instagram, you would you may be doing image analytics. Did you get it? Okay. Now see, uh, there are some uh, some information which are high level. There are information. So any any subject, 
any subject is divided into three parts basic intermediate and advanced okay so this course is a combination of basic and intermediate somebody who who is probably hearing analytics for the very first time is no there is no point teaching him artificial intelligence in this particular module first you need to understand the basics and then move on to high level so this is a combination of basics and intermediate i will talk about what it covers so it has introduction to data science of course i mean this is the same way that i did uh, i started analytics for myself so it will talk about introduction to data science it will give you an overview of what is data science what are the roles and responsibilities of a data science scientist what are the different type of analytics what is a structure unstructured data and so on then moving to introduction to r because we understand we feel here in uh, make in turn that unless and until you know a tool no one is going to hire you okay so a tool is very very important so we will so focus on a tool which is r to start with like i said r is very popular because it's free so we will talk about introduction to r how to install r and what are the different ides of r what are the basic building blocks then we'll move on to r programming uh, we'll talk about uh, you know the basics of r programming then what are the different data structures how to work on data structures using r then we will have uh, data manipulation yes that's correct hadoop is a part of big data this course does not cover big data so we do not it's, it's not big data that we are covering here we are covering general analytics here okay all right so which is i mean first uh, when we were kids if you remember we did not know how to walk right so if somebody if somebody does not know how to walk okay if he wants to run he will fall flat on face right so if somebody does not want does not know how to walk first he learns how to crawl then he learns how to walk and then he learns how to run so please maintain that step by step approach and this is exactly what we are trying to do here okay so we do data manipulation then we'll move on to basic statistics in which we will cover different technologies like hypothesis testing chi square test anova linear regression logistic regression classification clustering so that's where we end till clustering so in order to learn in depth do we need to do any other course so we will come up we have different courses available but this is basics so first learn to learn the basics and then we will tell you what is the next thing that you need to do in 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 the journey of analytics okay will this be enough for an intern absolutely absolutely this will be this is you know the the when, when the companies come for hiring or when for an internship the companies do not expect you guys to know this but when you know this the companies are actually surprised and they are more than glad to get you on board absolutely right so this is more than enough how business and analytics can be helpful for an mba specializing in hr okay tell me okay i would like to see the name okay so sushmita bora is asking how is analytics how analytics can be helpful for a mba specializing in hr okay so now you are in the in the domain of hr okay do you remember i told you that i was involved in setting up hr analytics center of excellence for one of the telecommunications company when i gave my introduction sushmita did you hear that were you there when i gave that introduction okay so what do you think i was expected uh, expected to do there can you think of any situation ajit i'll answer your question in a minute so no problem sushmita if you're not able to find out uh, 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 in a particular reason uh, okay 
you know what my job was my job was to set up analytics center of excellence meaning that i was there to build up a laboratory with uh, with the tools and technologies i was involved in hiring people and what they were supposed to do they were supposed to help the business the hr department come up with with some information some statistics some data driven decision making in today's world we no longer depend on just the resumes okay there are a lot of other things which are used by the recruiters by the recruitment team in within the hr department so everything is data driven so an, an hr analytics guy would help the recruitment team identify what talent what is the type of talent or the skill set is required for a particular job how many people are exactly required previously those decisions were based on the uh, were actually made on the basis of some information like you know some some you know information in tits and bits uh, you know maybe a bits and pieces and also maybe some knowledge or maybe some uh, experience or whatever but today it is driven by data so we would know exactly how many people we need we would know exactly what type of people we need we would know exactly when somebody is going to leave an organization if somebody is leaving an organization what is the reason that he is leaving an organization we do not necessarily have to rely on the person's comment or the feedback at the end we would know beforehand so there is a lot that can happen in hr predictions can be made yes absolutely right we can make the predictions so Ajit is saying, I'm a person from BE and will this be a core, but I want to work related to CS background. CS stands for computer science, is it? Okay, so if you're doing computer science, so probably what do you want to do? Do you want to build softwares? Is that what you want to do? Okay, all right, that's fine. You want to build softwares, which means you can go into IoT. right after this basic course how far i have traveled in analytics after this course jay shankar we would you would be at least knowing analytics and making yourself you will get noticed by the employers okay when you go out are you a fresh are you are you uh, pursuing your mba or you're pursuing your btech what what is it that you're doing Jai Shankar, what is it that you're pursuing? Okay, Jai Shankar, I lost him, I guess. Currently, digital marketing executive. Okay, so he's a digital marketing executive. So, if you're doing digital marketing, do you know Google and Analytics? So, that's analytics, right? okay so but there is a lot that you need to know so uh, the digital marketing uh, you know field is ever exploding it's, it's growing exponentially so there's so much that 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 can be done so unless you have but most of the graph i can't understand so which is why you need to know my friend if you do not have that understanding why would somebody hire you So this is a foundation course, Chandni. This is a foundation course. Okay. This is the not. This is not the end of uh, analytics journey. I have been learning analytics for last nine years. This analytics will be a common field. Yes, absolutely. This is in general. Then you can move into domain specific. This is a general analytics can be used in analytics can be used in all the domains that you can think of be it retail be it marketing sales uh, electricals uh, cement factories sugar mills you think of anything and analytics is there so this is in general then you can move into domain specific okay hold on i have uh, one some more questions here let me just answer them one by one so I'm an MBA, I want to learn this tool, but how long will it take to cover this course? I want to make my resume strong with the school, but at the very time I have my summer internship coming up, will I 
be able to get at least the R tool till the time? Yes, absolutely. This course will be approximately anywhere between 30, 30 to 35 hours. Okay, so we'll try to give you as much knowledge as possible during that time. But having said that, you will have to study also because you can't re just rely on two to three hours every. Uh, I mean, two to three hours on a Saturday and two to three hours on a Sunday. You can't really rely on that. Uh, is there any Google certification for NITs? Yes, there is a Google certification for NITs. That's absolutely right. Where knowing the field knowledge, where do I? Okay. Yes. Okay. Mm, so far, this course will I be able to understand Google Analytics very well? Okay. We are not going into domain specific. You are going into domain specific, Jai Shankar. So what you're talking about is a web analytics. So we are not doing web analytics. So there are people who would come from a pharmaceutical background. There will be people coming from HR background or a marketing background. So we are not going domain specific. We are giving you the information in general and then you can move into domain specific. But not in this particular course. Will there be any specific tool for different fields? No, there would not be. There would not be a specific tool. So if you're doing analytics, it can be R, it can be Python, it can be SAS, any of the tools. Is there any some, uh, okay, so Avinav is asking, is there any physical training center where I can get training along with the job? I am not aware if there is any. Where, where are you based, Avinav? Which place are you based? That, you know, I'm not really sure if there is any center which can give you a job along with the training. Which is more preferable, R or SAS? R is more preferable being, uh, the only reason is that R is a, is a free software and most of the companies are moving into R. Why would companies want to invest so much money in SAS? So for SAS, one user is supposed to pay 11 lakh rupees a year. So why would the company want to pay that? Uh, Devi Prasad is asking, but will that imply my firm practical hand on the R tool as this is completely online? How will I cope up with it? Okay, so can you elaborate your question, Devi Prasad? Will that imply my firm practical hand on it? I'm not, I did not quite get your question. Please rephrase your question. In the meantime, I'll answer Ajit's question. Okay. So yes, Ajit, you can definitely become a CAP like I am, but you will have to study a lot for that. Okay. And uh, maybe you might have to travel. You may have to travel to the States as well. Yes. So yes, of course, over a period of time, I mean, I have I did my CAP after I had been in the field of analytics for like five years. That's when I did my CAP. Devi Prasad is asking as this is an online course and the R tool is completely system. -driven. Yes, this is this is going to be an online course and R is system driven. So I will I will tell you how to install R, but mostly uh, Mostly these uh, the classes are going to be in weekends so that I don't think there would be a problem. Uh, Rajneesh is asking I'm a student of pharmaceutical and MBA marketing background. How analytics will help me in my career at pharmaceutical industry. OK, so I said I think I mentioned Rajneesh that I was working for one of the pharmaceutical industries and uh, there you can you probably can work as as a part of the business analytics team, maybe reporting. So you manage the sales and you do the reportings, you know, weekly reportings, monthly reportings, or you may also get into the research and the development team. So because in the research and the development team, there's a lot of analytics that goes on. 
okay so let's say they come up with a new drug okay they come up with a new medicine and you want to find out whether that medicine will be helpful or not so you you know get that medicine experimented on a lot of subjects and then you do the analytics of before and after so there's a lot of things that analytics can be useful in the field of pharmaceuticals so you might want to look so if you write analytics in the field of pharmaceuticals so you'll get a lot of information on the website on web if you write just write that in google the point is you have to guys okay from what i understand so the questions that you guys are asking okay so i wonder i'm not saying i'm sorry but i wonder that you know you guys have not thought about your future that much you need to spend more time with yourselves okay you need to sit down and understand what you need to do what you want to do in future what is it that will give you what is it that will help your career in future write down what are the top jobs in next two years time learn that you'll find analytics there so learn it uh can i get the full complete course i think uh, make intern team will help you with the course fee and all that stuff uh, you know this is something that they will handle can we get directly get into a job or business right after my graduation or should i have my mba so see that does not matter okay so i i did my mba two years back okay but i was still working so it does not necessarily mean whether you're an mba or a, you know whether you are just graduate okay so there are companies who maybe you know may write that we will will only hire mba but that does not matter so you can if you want to do an mba just go ahead and do an mba but that will will that restrict you from becoming a business analyst if you're not an mba that's not true okay is there placement after this course uh, no i don't think there is a placement after this course um i'm but i you know more information can be given to you uh, by uh, the make intern team okay so uh, don't worry about that so we will answer those questions as well along with the fee so um, i think uh, you know i have uh, i have uh, uh, satish on the other line satish are you still there is that is that okay can you come online and if you can answer the the fee or if there's anything that they need to uh, write or email to you so that they get yeah, these yeah. answers yeah sure uh, uh, anirban uh, yes the opportunity uh, is for internship assistance uh, we can provide the internships uh, those who are look, joining for this course after the completion of this course and all okay so make intern is basically internship portal where uh, students can get internship through us okay so basically those students are like doing course with us they can get internship priority from our team surely they will get internship with us with better in, uh, stipends also they can start moving their career in analytics field on as well in future and about the fees and all uh, can uh, so when where would the uh, participants were would they would, would you tell not, them about uh, not an issue and even uh, they can touch with our counselor team or uh, they will tell you like after the getting the feedback uh, calls and all after this uh, uh, after this uh, webinar they will might be touch with everyone okay so they will tell you each and every uh, explanation if they need it okay mm -hmm. okay all right so i think uh, you know uh, ajit he has clarified satish has clarified uh, satish is a part of uh, the management team within make intern so he has clarified that you will uh, definitely get an get an assistance with regards to internship so that's for sure okay all right then i guess uh, you know i have actually completed what i had to say so for rest of the questions with regards to the fee structure and also the duration and about everything else so please get in touch uh, with uh, the the make intern team here or probably they will reach out to you after this webinar yes ajit i'm still here tell me how you manage going to different sect, sect okay so uh, well see uh, i okay so i started my career with one of the organizations yeah that's correct 
and then you know probably i i put across my resume and you know i got a call or maybe letters from organizations asking if i can work from for them and i did that's how i got into different sectors because i am i am a generalist okay i am not a domain specific i do not have a domain specific thing so i i could actually work in different domains but the problem with generalist is that you have to spend some time understand the domain no problem uh, no problem devi prasad it was nice talking to you everybody and i hope to see you soon and uh, please uh, ask your questions your doubts your whatever you have in terms of the the course per se and let the uh, make inter team answer all of them all the questions okay thank you so much guys uh, you have a lovely evening ahead wish you all the best thanks a lot